Hi, it's Dan, and today I'll be testing a few different 4K cameras. I'll be starting with the Zcam E1, which I bought from Kickstarter a couple of years ago. Uh, at the time, I thought the quality was really poor on it, but I've heard that the newer version of the firmware, which is 0.3.0, .0, fixes a lot of the quality issues that I was seeing. So hopefully that's true. I would love to be able to use this tiny little camera. Uh, I'm also going to be testing the Yi Micro Four Thirds 4K camera, which, uh, you know, it's another it's a very small budget camera. It's worth giving that one a try. And then in addition to that, I have uh, three of the Yi 4K Plus action cameras. Uh, one of them is modified with a backbone kit, which sets it up with a C-mount. One of them, uh, I just popped off the existing lens and put on a new uh, M12 lens, actually a few mic different M12 lenses, and then finally one with just the original lens. So uh, I'm recording also uh, audio and all the other backup stuff on my GH5. It'll also be a good reference for any given clip. Uh, this one I'm also shooting with the uh, Zcam E1. Uh, I guess we'll take a look at that afterward and see how it did. For the two Micro Four Thirds cameras, I'll be testing them with the Panasonic 14mm f2.5 lens because it's a very small lens which pairs nicely with such a small camera. And then also for kicks, I'll be trying them with the Canon 50mm f1.4 fd on a speed booster, which should, on these cameras, make them be pretty close, I think, to about an 80mm f1.0. So a very nice portrait range and also uh, should have really nice bokeh, I hope. Uh, I've been recording this clip with the Panasonic 14mm f2.5. I'll probably cut between it and the GH5. Uh, you'll be able to tell the difference because the 14mm is a bit wider. Coming up next, the Canon 50mm f1.4 FD. <coughs> this is another test with the Yi 4K Micro Four Thirds camera, this time with the Panasonic 14mm lens on it. Uh, obviously a lot wider than the 50 and uh, better depth of field, so at least there's a better chance that I'm in focus with this lens. This is testing the Canon 50mm f1.4. Hopefully I managed to get myself vaguely in focus. It's pretty hard to tell on that. Uh, I didn't see any options for peaking or for punching in focus with the manual lens or anything like that. So. Uh, I had to just eyeball it. Hopefully I'm close. My studio neighbors are intermittently hammering on their walls, and I've had to redo this a few times now because of that. So uh, I'm just going to keep talking through it if they do it again and hope that my mics just aren't picking it up that much. Like that. So this is a test of the Yi. 4K Micro Four Thirds camera. Uh, I didn't see an option to change the uh, frame rate, so I'm just leaving it at whatever it is. I guess it's probably 24 or 30 frames a second. I'm just not sure which until I get it in my computer. Uh, this one also didn't really have any good options for uh, manual focus assist, so hopefully this is in focus. Again, I just kind of had to eyeball it, and since I'm not sitting in the chair as I'm trying to focus the camera, uh, you know, your guess is as good as mine as to whether I'm in focus on that. Hopefully I am, at least somewhat. If not, I guess I'll be back tomorrow and there'll hopefully be less hammering noise. Speaking of uncomfortably close and out of focus, this is an Anjanu 17 to 68 millimeter uh, f2.2 lens mounted on the Yi 4K Plus action camera. Uh, I think I need to do something with this lens. Uh, you know, when it's screwed all the way into the C-mount, uh, it's really difficult to get it to focus right. Uh, I think this lens might be par focal, but it definitely isn't right now. So I assume that I have to shim it out a little bit to get the infinity focus right. So uh, expect another try with this lens at some point in the future, but not today. All right, even more close up, but I think I managed to get this one more or less in focus as well as I can tell. Uh, this is a Sohm Berthiet 25 millimeter f1.8 lens on the 4K Plus action camera. Since the camera has such a small sensor, it ends up being pretty close to a 130, 140 millimeter lens. So uh, it's relatively tough to get this one focused. Uh, this 
screen on the back of the camera is very small and very low resolution. Uh, I'm using uh, a mobile app, which gives me at least a little bit bigger of a screen with a little bit more detail to focus, but that also has uh, kind of an annoying lag when I'm trying to focus. So uh, I'm not sure that there's going to be a good answer for focusing this camera, but uh, I think the quality generally looks surprisingly good given that this is a tiny little action camera. Next up on the Yi 4K Plus action camera, this is the Berthiat 10mm f1.9. This is an RX lens, so the quality won't be quite as good on a non-Bolex camera. Uh, it still looks decent enough to me. Uh, this one uh, seems to be a pretty decent length for uh, doing this sort of like talking, vlog sort of thing. Uh, camera's a few feet away from me. Uh, the focus, I'm not sure, is quite right. I, I just wonder about the flange distance on the backbone gauge, because right now it's set to 16 inches focus, and that camera is probably a good six or seven feet away from me. So that's something I'll be digging in on in the near future. This is a Computart 8mm f1.4 on the Yi 4K Plus action camera. This is a newer lens than the other two that I tested. Uh, pretty modern uh, CCTV lens, claims to be, um, I think, a 16 megapixel lens, so it should be fairly sharp. The other is uh, not quite so sharp, a little more of a vintage feel. So, see how this one turns out. For my last C mount lens, this is an Azure 5mm uh, f1.8 on the Yi 4K Plus action camera. Uh, I hope I got this in focus, I'm not certain that I did, but uh, looking at my screen, it looks decent, but the uh, video preview that goes over Wi-Fi from the camera is not extremely high resolution, so it's fairly difficult to judge uh, with a wider angle lens like this this far out if I'm in focus. So I guess we'll find out. This is the first lens I'm testing on the Yi 4K Plus action camera where I just removed the original lens and am trying different M12 lenses. This is a 5.4 millimeter M12 lens. I think it says it's a 16 megapixel lens. Uh, the f-stop isn't printed on it, but from what I remember on the manufacturer's website, uh, all the M12 lenses I got are somewhere in the neighborhood of f2.4 to f2.8, so they're all within about a half-stop of each other. Uh, again, you know, I wasn't entirely certain I got this in focus. I used a loop on the back of the camera to uh, get it as close as I can. Uh, the preview on my iPad is not that great a quality, so fingers crossed. Next up on the 4K Plus action camera without its original lens is an M12 uh, 7.2 millimeter, I think it is, lens. Another one that, you know, is uh, supposed to be a high megapixel rating. Uh, as far as I can tell, I have it more or less in focus. So we'll see uh, how good the quality is on this. Hopefully it's decent because I'm kind of excited for this lens. Uh, it's pretty close to a standard lens and uh, even though it sticks out a little bit from the camera's body, uh, it's a nice tiny lens that will go pretty well with this camera, so fingers crossed. Finally, on the Yi 4K Plus action camera, this is a 2 point something millimeter uh, M12 lens. It's the closest lens that I have to the original focal length of the camera, except this one is rectilinear instead of fisheye, so uh, you know, if you wanted to get uh, a look that's quite a bit more like the camera originally had, but without all the awful distortion, uh, this one is probably a good way to go. I uh, can't wait to see how the quality looks when I download the footage. Finally, last but not least, in all of its ridiculous wide-angle fisheye glory, is the 4K Plus action camera. Uh, the quality on this is actually really good, and I think the lens is pretty decent for what it is. But it's still uh, really wide for a lot of things, and uh, the fisheye distortion is just hard to deal with. Uh, the camera has an option to remove the distortion, but uh, if I recall correctly, it doesn't work in 4K P60 mode. Uh, on a final note, uh, at least in 4K mode, I haven't tried it in 2.7K mode or 1080p, the electronic image stabilizer in the Yi 4K cameras seems to be pretty well calibrated for the extremely wide-angle lens that the camera comes with. So trying it with any of the longer lenses that I've messed around with today really doesn't work very well and doesn't let you handhold them very well. So uh, definitely with some of the longer lenses, you're going to want them on a tripod or some other stabilizer because uh, handholding them, you're just going to have extremely shaky footage. 
Uh, otherwise, uh, I'm excited to see how all of these tests turned out. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting home and downloading the footage and uh, doing some pixel peeping. So uh, I guess that's it for today.